did notice, though, in, uh, and I know you don't have your notes in front of you, but it, in 7, it says, the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. Clearly, I mean, clearly a reference for Jesus, but the wording there where he says, those he has invited, mm-hmm. I mean, I always, I always, to me, that brings up all of the predestination and God only lets some people in. I guess that's like the word invitation in the NIV has me a little like squirrely. Um, because when I think about predestination, I think about that the plan is predestined and that God knows who will accept him and who won't. So that that's not predestination. That's just foreknowledge. But this this clearly says he, I mean, the, he has consecrated those he has invited. But that was interesting, the way that's phrased. You know, Jesus talks about those who come in with, with, and they're like not invited. I think being invited is receiving the invitation. Which you is know, I what? about the wedding feast. Yes. Well, receiving the gospel, you receive the invitation. He's invited you. And those who have received it, he consecrates. If I remember correctly, back to Greek class, that's how Dr. Bridges explained it. The, the Greek yeah, phrases so. of, you know, that you, I think his example was, you you walk through a door you know it says like predestination on the outside of the door you walk through the door and you turn around and it says you were chosen i mean it's the same idea that yeah. you're talking about you know it that, depends on how you think of sovereignty we talked about this mm. at the bible study when i was at church and if you think of sovereignty as god just controlling absolutely every element in, the, in his creation or he's just the highest power and he makes it's under his sovereign uh, will. He sovereignly gives us the capacity. I think I said in the Bible, he sovereignly gives us the capacity to receive or to resist. So he does, he does it because he gives us that capacity. We don't have, we don't give ourselves that capacity. So it's always him end, doing it. You're talking about the hardening of hearts. It's like, well, it's him doing it because he gives the capacity. Yeah. We don't like do that ourselves. That's he's given us that under his sovereign will. That's what he wants it. You can think of it that way. You can think of it. He controls every element and it's just we have no free will, no choice, no nothing. He just controls it all. It's like, I don't think that's right. I didn't think about the passage with the virgins and the invitation from the bridegroom. But I think, yeah, I don't know why I didn't. But you bring that up, brings that in that the invitation is given. Those that respond, they're the ones who were invited. The ones that uh-huh. are prepared, they're the ones who are invited. Um, that's and, and I think it's true. Though. You. If, if you and when you receive that, you're consecrated, and you're consecrated to the blood of Christ. That's interesting. We're we're created in God's image. God's free, so He creates us free with that capacity. But He's giving of Himself to, for us to have that. And because He's that way, we can respond to Him in that way. I think that's what it is. And then the you know, you know. Our flesh just gives us capacity to be forgiven, I guess, because of the way he is, because he, he just right. keeps loving. Well, and I think I think that's that's an appropriate thought in here, because, I mean, Zephaniah is talking about destruction. He's talking about the way they've turned away from God. And this isn't just any old God. This is the sovereign God. This is the God. Um, even at the beginning, he talks about sweeping away everything from the face of the earth which he did in noah he talks about almost deconstructing the days of creation i was looking and he talks about men and animals birds of the air fish of the sea that's like sixth day fifth day god is so sovereign he can undo creation and yet he you're right the the he is he gives us freedom he doesn't dictate to us I mean, we've been going through the minor prophets for a little bit now. We, you know, we started, we've done Amos, we've done back, we we did, I mean, a lot of these. Mm -hmm. And this one feels very intense. And I don't know why it does. It feels like the words are a little more intense. They are stacked together. Let's destroy, remove, remove. Yes, and whereas the other one kind of gives a break, this one after Zephaniah the other. does not. 
Yeah, he's just relentless with that language. And he's talking yeah, about I, he's talking about Judah. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's that's why he's right. so upset. These these this this is why he's so upset. They know but they're supposed to know better. He's more upset yeah. with uh, like you know, teachers. Like they're they're the nation they're the teacher of all the nations, right? So yeah. they're gonna have a stricter judgment. Well yeah, he talks about the there be a loud crash and then wail and the merchants will be wiped out and there's no trade. And and he does and he does say in here, I mean he says Jerusalem. He says Judah, then in verse four he says Jerusalem, then again in twelve he says Jerusalem. But I think it's interesting where he uses those city markers, like you said. He said, Listen, this judgment is coming on this city. And it's just the first chapter, but even in, as you get towards the end of this first chapter, he starts to give a hint of restoration, doesn't he? The the hope that he gives, I think, is in the middle with that verse I mentioned earlier about the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. That yeah yeah, that, yeah it's, it's yes, a sacrifice yes, language. That's what I'm all thinking of, of this is going to happen. Yes, a meal, but God, a meal. Yeah, that God has already prepared the the healing sacrificial meal. Yes, and then at the beginning of chapter two. He kind of says, "All right, gather together, all you shameful people," and then he's gonna, then he's gonna kind of give them that hope, give them that. Seek the Lord; He's ready for you. He He's got your meal ready. Yeah, the priestly; He's got your your righteousness. Seek His, and I think that's at the beginning of two. But you're right; I mean, it's it's right there as he's as he's been severe. Then he brings in this. You have hope. Your hope is only in the Lord in this sacrifice that he's already prepared. Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's subtle, but it's there. Yes. Yeah, sacrificial meal. That's what it, he's, he's hitting. It. There's a hint there. That's what I meant. Yes. Yes. It's in the middle. It's in verse seven. But at the end, as you get into, into chapter two, he's saying, like, gather for that meal. Gather, seek the Lord. Yeah. And, and only when we seek the Lord and partake in that sacrificial meal is there going to be any hope, which immediately makes and me think the of the And there's the invitation right there. And he will yeah. consecrate that, and, and then they'll have that meal. Yeah, it's 2 verse 1 where he gather together, gather together. Yeah, that's the that's And the that invitation. meal is eating and drinking of Christ's flesh, though they don't know that yet. 